الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد هبت في الله Continue on in the methodology of the Salaf, Salaf al-Salih. Sheikh Salaf bin Fuzan mentioned the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, or, or the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about the iftiraq al-ummah. And this was all a part of the advice of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the, the nation would divide and that our salvation would come through being one jama'ah and following the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he mentioned the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِنَّ هَذَا صَرَاتِ مُسْتَقِيمًا فَاعْتَبِيُوهُ وَلَا تَعْتَبِيُوا السُّبُولُ فَتَفَرَّكَ بِكُمْ عَنْ سَبِيلِهِ ذَلِكُمْ وَسَاقُمْ بِهِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And verily this is my straight path, so follow it. And follow not the other path, for they will separate you away from his path. This he has ordained for you that you may become al-muttaqoon, that you become pious. So by the part of the opposite of being pious, and piety is following the way of deviance, is following the way of misguidance, is following the way that the Prophet ﷺ did not order and not ordain through his authentic sunnah والسلام, and deviating from the madhab of the salaf of this ummah. And this, uh, Shaykh Salim ibn Fazan, then he said, this is so you may fear the fire and deviation. So fire, deviation leads to the fire, of course. As the Prophet ﷺ said, Kullu bid'atin dalala, kullu dalala tin fin nar. All innovation, is uh, misguidance. And all misguidance leads to the fire. Then the Shaykh said, You must oppose the deviant sex and tread the path that is safe in order that you may meet your Prophet وسلم, his companions, and those who follow them. The person who adheres to this path, especially in the latter days, he will be harassed by the people and those who oppose this path. He will be harmed and threatened by them. And thus he must be patient. He will be approached with desires in order to divert him from the path. And he will be threatened with good and bad by way of the deviant groups and methodology. SubhanAllah. There's so many uh, examples that we can mention from this that uh, Sheikh Salim bin Fazan mentioned. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him and bless him to continue to spread this beneficial knowledge. And bless us to benefit from this alam. Uh, Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Then the Shaykh said, Thus this person needs patience. So the path of calling to Allah is patience. The path of the Sunnah is patience. And sometimes we find even from those who are close to us that they may be calling us away from that Sabeel al mu'minin, that path of patience, or away from something of the Sunnah. And may Allah forgive us and bless us all to be on Sirat al Mustaqim. Ameen. And in this regard, he said, It is because of this the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Bada al Islam gharibin. وَسَيَعُودُ غَرِيبًا كَمَا بَدَى فَطُوبَى لِلْغُرَبَى The Prophet ﷺ said, Islam began as something strange. And it will once again become something strange. So, Tuba is for the strangers. The companions who asked uh, Anhum, Who are the strangers, O Messenger of Allah ﷺ? He replied, they are those who are upright, while the people are corrupt, subhanAllah. In a similar narration, he replied, those who rectify what the people have corrupted. Consequently, nothing can save one from deviation in this life, nor from the fire in the next life, except adhering to this path, the path of the Salaf al -Sari. They are those whom Allah said concerning them, and whosoever obeys Allah and the Messenger, then they will be in the company of those whom Allah has bestowed His grace of the Prophets, the Siddiqun, those followers of the Prophets, and foremost who believe in Him, like Abu Bakr as Siddiq, uh, the martyrs and the righteous. So here the Shaykh is, is mentioning from the ahadith, from the evidences of the ahadith of the Prophet ﷺ in the ayat, to show us that the, the strangers. Of course, they'll be strange. Why? Because they adhered to the Sunnah, and they were those, as the Prophet ﷺ explained in the narration, that they, those people who rectify, they're the ones who make things better. So I want you to pay attention to this point. Look to the Dawah of people, whoever's, whoever you listen to, as far as listening to students of knowledge, listening to du'at and stuff like this, and ulama even. Look to see what is the result. Is their dawah causing more fitna? Is their dawah causing people to split? Is their dawah causing people to do bid'ah? 
Or is there da'wah causing people to come closer to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah and come closer to Allah? That's what you always, that's a good measuring stick. I promise you, if you take that with you, you will be, that is a tool. That is the mezan of the sunnah. That is the mezan of the salaf as salih That you take that and you look to see, are whoever I'm listening to, whoever I'm benefiting from, Am I really benefiting? Are they bringing me closer to Allah? Are they bringing me further from to Allah? This is uh, advice also we hear from our Shaykh, Shaykh Abdul Razak uh, uh, Al-Badr, Hafizullah Ta'ala. I recall him mentioning this in the dars as well, which is very important. You know, because the da'wah is what? It's supposed to be rectifying us. That's why when we call to the minhaj to the salaf, it should be rectifying people. And it should be rectifying us. We should be better people. We should be better Muslims, better believers by practicing the sunnah. We shouldn't be further from Allah, doing more sins. And we shouldn't be further from Allah by kicking away and, and, and making people run from the sunnah. As our Shaykh, Shaykh uh, Saleh Sahaini and Kathir bin Ulama mentioned, and before them, as the men had to the salaf. That we don't want to be turning people away from the da'wah, we want to be inviting them. That's what da'wah is. Da'wah is, we're not a, 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 a few people who, bi'idnillah, are guided, and then we've cut off everyone else, and, every, and no one else is guided. And we don't want them to be guided. La, you want the people to be guided. May Allah bless, bless us with tawfiq. Then the Shaykh said, uh, and then the, and the, and, uh, he said, and it is because of this, Allah made it mandatory that we recite Surah Al-Fatiha in every unit of prayer. That we need guidance. We ask Allah for guidance. Whether this prayer is mandatory or optional, there is a tremendous supplication toward the end of the Surah, Ihdina Surat Al-Mustaqeen. Guide us to the straight path. Look at that. It's about guidance. The minhaj of the Salaf is about hidayah. It is a minhaj which is based on hidayah, based on being guided to Allah, coming closer to Allah, better in your ibadah to Allah, coming closer and, and worshipping Him, Subhana. That's what it's about. That's how it should be rectifying us and the people around us. Bi'idnillah. May Allah bless us with that guidance. I mean, He said, It is the straight path because indeed there are other paths which are deviant and deceiving. Thus the person who asks Allah to protect him from these deviant paths, and he asks that he be guided to the straight path, this means that one requests to be guided to the straight path, and he remains firm upon it. May Allah bless us with ikhlas, with thabat, ameen. He makes this supplication in every unit of prayer because of its extreme importance. Look at that. We're always asking Allah subhanahu, for, subhanahu wa ta'ala for guidance, and we need his guidance. And don't ever become arrogant and think that you're guided. This is a masiba kubra, that some of the people believe they're guided, like the Christians say. You have certain groups amongst the Christians, uh, a particular sect. And I recall, in, uh, you know, sometimes we'd give dawah to some of the people, and they would say, you'd say, oh, how are you today? Oh, I'm blessed. And if you talk to them more, you find out what they meant by that. And, and I would have conversations with them. And they would say, you know, I'm blessed, meaning I'm saved. Meaning that whatever I do, I'm going to Jannah. The Muslim doesn't believe like this. The Mu'min doesn't believe like this. We believe that we are between khawf or raja, that we don't know our ending. And we hope that we are going to be saved. And our belief tells us, and this is the madhab of the salaf, that even from Ahli Iman, if we die upon with any, even a mustard seed's worth of Iman in our hearts, then we will eventually enter Jannah. Even if we have a lot of sins and we have to be punished in the fire, we believe that every believer that goes into the hellfire for their sins to be purified will one day come out of the fire. This is what the Muslim believes. This is the, the creed of Ahl Iman. This is the creed of the Salaf as -Saleh. So never become arrogance with regards to guidance. And there's so many ahadith, the hadith of the Prophet وسلم, when he said, uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, And one of you will do the deeds of the people of Jannah until what is between him is a hand span and, uh, or arm span length between it and him. And then what was written will overtake him, meaning the Qadr, the decree, will overtake him and he will do the deeds of the people of the fire and enter it. And may Allah protect us from that Amin. And likewise, the person, the people from Ahl Nar. When the Ahdakum li yamalu bi amla Ahl Nar, hatta ma yukuna bayna huwa bayna ha illa the Ra'an, for Yusbuku ali al Kitab, for Yamalu bi amla Ahl al Jannah, for Yurhanuha. The Prophet said that one of you will do the deeds of the people of the fire. SubhanAllah, on Kufr, on Shirk, on whatever, on Ma'asi, in the Noob. 
had until he's an arm span away from the, the the hellfire. Then what was written will overtake him. He will do the deeds of Jannah, and he will enter it. That is scary, and that's that khufu raja. That scares us. It should scare us because we don't know how we're going to end. You could be on Iman, you could be doing Dao, you could be this, Talib, Sheikh, whatever, blah, blah, blah. And then you end up going to the hellfire. Die in shirk. Die in kufr. Likewise, the opposite. Someone could be, and you thought they were from Ahlul Nar. You were thought they was, used to curse them, used to speak ill about them, they used to do bad things. Subhanallah, how many people who did bad things? Allah blessed them with Tawbah to come to Islam. Walhamdulillah. And so he said, and then the Shaykh said, Who are those who traverse upon the straight path? They are those whom Allah has blessed. Surat al ladina an'amta alaykum. Alayhim. Allah says, The path of those whom you've blessed. Subhanallah. Those are the Ahla Sirat al Mustaqim. Those are the people following the Minhaj of the Zalaf. They're the ones who Allah favored with guidance. Understand that guidance comes from Allah, from Al Hadi, His Hidayah. It comes from Him. Seek it from Him, first and foremost. And that it is from His Ni'am, it's from His favors that Allah guides you. And may Allah guide us, I mean. Who are those whom Allah has blessed? The Shaykh asked the question. Whom are those who Allah has blessed? He answers, مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ وَالشُّهَدَاءَ وَالصَّالِحِينَ وَحَسَنَ أُولَيْكَ رَفِيقًا Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Of the Prophets, the Siddiqun, the followers of the Prophets, and as we already mentioned the translation, the martyrs and the righteous, how excellent these companions are. Those are... And then he said, if you ask Allah to guide you to this path, this indicates that you have requested to be protected from the deviant paths and those that have gone astray. And then he mentions in Surah Al-Fatiha, Surat Al-Ladina An'amta Alayhim Ghayr Al-Maghdubi Alayhim Wal Abdalim The path of those whom you've blessed, not the path of those who've earned your anger, nor those who have went astray. Ghayr Al-Maghdubi Alayhim Nor the path of those who earned your anger. The Sheikh says, those who Allah is angry with are the Jews. They are those who knew the truth, but they did not accept and act upon it. The anger of Allah is upon those who traverse the path of the Jews from this nation. Meaning some of us would follow the path of the Jews. The Prophet ﷺ said, That you will follow the path of those who came before you. The Prophet ﷺ said in another hadith, <clears throat> Whoever follows the people, then he's from them. So be careful of following the way of the people who Allah is angry with. So he said, The anger of Allah is also upon those who traverse the path of the Jews from this nation. Thus, everyone who knows the truth but does not act accordingly is upon the path of the Jews. The path of those whom Allah is angry with due to him not implementing his knowledge of the truth. May Allah forgive us of our many, many shortcomings and acting upon our knowledge. I mean, this person has in fact taken the knowledge but abandoned the actions. And thus, every person who has knowledge but does not act upon it incurs the anger of Allah. O oh Allah, Bless us with ikhlas, with the bad, and bless us to practice the knowledge that you've given us. Ameen, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Then he says, Walabbali, nor the path of those who went astray. So we don't want that path. We need Allah's guidance. He said, these are the people who will worship Allah upon ignorance and deviation. SubhanAllah. Ahla bid'ah wa ahla kufr. And they still worship Allah. They still try to worship. They still believe, have, have a, 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 a concept of iman. If they're uh, outside of the fold of Islam, they might have a concept of Iman, but they don't. They haven't entered Iman. They worship Him and seek nearness to Him. They seek nearness. They want to come closer to Allah, but in a manner that is not legislated. This is Ahl Bid'ah, and by the way of an incorrect path. This is Ahl Bid'ah. I was Well, well, uh, well uh, the people who who have gone astray. They act upon innovation, without proof from the Quran or the Sunnah. The Prophet ﷺ said, All bid'ah is, is a deviation. This is what the Christians are upon. And likewise, every person who adopts their path, everyone who worships Allah in a manner that is not legislated and correct, is astray and his actions are void. So be careful. Make sure that what you're doing is in accordance with the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah. Whether you're uh, 
any act of ibadah, whether you're making dawah, whether you're trying to gain an understanding of the religion, make sure it's the proper understanding of the religion that you're preaching to the people, that you're trying to practice with the people. People have so many different concepts of issues of even like Al-Asma'i wa Sifat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names. Look at the Ashadis, they have this, the Maturidiya, they have this concept. Uh, and then of course, Ahl Sunnah, we have our belief, which is in accordance with Kitab wa Sunnah and the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. Likewise, the issue of takfir, the takfiriyin, what do they have? Groups like ISIS, groups like uh, uh, Boko Haram and Sh Shabab and all these deviants, they have their own concept of takfir, which is not from uh, in accordance with Kitab wa Sunnah and the understanding of the Salaf of this Ummah. They have deviants and they have misguidance and they make the Muslims' blood halal. And they make takfir of the, the, the and, 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 and call the, the ulama the most worst and wicked of names. وَعِيَاذٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ حَوْلَاءِ مُبْتَدِئِينَ So, it's imperative, أَحَبَتِ فِي اللَّهِ to follow the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and make sure you have the correct understanding of Islam. He said this, meaning the supplication at the end of Surah Al-Fatiha, is a comprehensive supplication which we repeat in every unit of prayer. We must reflect over the meaning of this supplication and use it by supplicating with conscious hearts. We likewise must know its meaning so that our supplication will be answered. After reciting the surah, we say, Amin. So that, <clears throat> thus we'll, we'll end that aspect of Darsan and we'll continue on in our next sitting. Ahabati fillah. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.